What is up guys? I'm back with another video looking at lysosomal storage diseases and trying to really have a bunch of really cool tips and mnemonic to help remember some of the hard parts of lysosomal storage diseases such as the specific names of the enzymes that are defective or deficient and then looking at the um, what specific molecules will build up um, in the lysosomes or in the intracellular space or extracellular space depending on the, uh, the disease that it is and then looking at the characteristics and I try to include as many little tips to remember some of the hard points as possible. So this is an overview of the diseases we're going to look at. Um, I want to kind of start, let me get the color here uh, correct before we begin the video. I want to kind of cluster some of these as well because a lot of these kind of go together in terms of distinguishing characteristics. So a lot of them present very similar. For example, Tay-Sachs and neiman pick disease uh, present very similar, but they have one really important distinguishing characteristic to help separate the two. The same thing goes for these three. Hurler, Hunter, and I-Cell disease all present very similarly, but little differences between the two. Crabby disease, a uh, Crabbe's disease, sorry, and metachromatic leukodystrophy presents very similar. And um, so we'll break it down kind of into those clusters and then we'll look at mnemonics for each one of these to help uh, kind of so you can get the questions right without having to put too much thought into it. Okay, so the first one is going to be uh, Febreze, Febreze disease. So I always use, the minute I look at the word Febreze, I think of a fox and I go straight into the mindset of Star Fox. The reason I do that, if you remember playing Star Fox on the Super Nintendo or even the N64 or whatever when you were growing up, um, Star Fox is basically a kind of like a hero that fought in the galaxy. And he flew around in a spaceship and whatnot. So there's a lot of stuff involving space. So the first thing I want you to know is that Febreze disease is going to be X-linked recessive. I'm saying that because the majority of lysosomal X-linked recessive. The majority of lysosomal storage diseases are autosomal recessive, but this is one kind of particular one that stands out uniquely because it is X-linked recessive. The way I remember that is because, remember, Star Fox is a fighter, and he had a little laser gun that he would fire, either from his ship or that he had like a little gun on his side. And I think that the X kind of looks like a crosshair in a something that you would aim to look down through a gun so that's the way I and I use a similar mnemonic this same sort of mnemonic when I um, was studying all of the different modes of inheritance for whether it be autosomal recessive autosomal dominant or X-linked recessive um, dirty USMLE which is another fantastic YouTube channel on YouTube um, they have songs that he, he uh, the the guy had come up with basically to help remember these different diseases and one of the ways that I added to the X-linked recessive was to think of a crosshair to help me kind of remember the beginning of the song talking about um, a hunter using one of the first words. So anyway, so this is X-linked recessive which is unique to all the other ones. Then you need to know the actual defective, the thing that's defective in Febreze disease and it is, alt it is called alpha galactosidase. So this is a defective alpha galactosidase Galacto, galactosidase. Sorry if I didn't spell that right. This is going to be a deficiency with this particular enzyme, galactosidase A. And you're then, because of this, you're going to have a buildup of ceramide trihexoside. Ceramide trihexoside. Now, why I said to remember Star Fox is because this galactosidase, sorry, galactosidase sounds like galaxy sounds like galaxy and that helps me then remember when I see Febreze I think of Fox so specifically Star Fox and then I can remember okay we're talking about alpha galactosidase or the alpha galaxy it just sounds like something that would be in space okay and then you're gonna have a buildup of ceramide trihexoside when you can't basically you don't have this enzyme to break down uh, for that substrate okay and the next thing I think of is again just like we use that word for Bryce to remember um, Star Fox you can use the word for Bryce in fact that starts with an F to remember fever and I use this now to get all the symptoms of this disease so I'm not gonna list all the symptoms I'm going to list the symptoms that will get you the question right because these are distinguishing characteristics so the first one I look at is the fact that the patient so you need to think of somebody who is in space, basically. You remember that space 
is it is way colder than it would be on Earth. It's always it's very cold in space. So that so then that would tell you that you wouldn't be sweating much if you were in space. Say you were in a big space suit, you're not going to be sweating because it's so cold. So you're going to have decreased sweating in this disease. This is a very distinguishing characteristic among uh, of this one among all the other ones. Not only are you going to have that, but you're going to have an something called angiokeratomas which is shown over here in this picture. These are basically just little dilated um, blood capillaries, but they're also hyperkeratinized, so that's where it gets the name keratoma. So they're like little dilated blood capillaries that show up kind of red, but they're darker. They're more of a like a brownish color, and that's that keratinization that is um, being presented in this disease. And then the last really important uh, characteristic is peripheral neuropathy, or you could even say nerve pain, I mean, kind of can present different ways. Peripheral neuropathy, and this is going to be specifically peripheral, so this is kind of be the distal extremities of the upper and lower extremities. So all of these three things are going to be defining characteristics for, for Bryer's disease. I don't have a really clever way to remember angiokeratomas, but I told you the way to remember sweating is because we're thinking about Star Fox, so he's in space, it's really cold. And then the peripheral neuropathy, if you can remember F for fever, right, F for fever, then you should kind of be able to um, link that when you have a fever, you begin to shut down a lot of your neural processes. Remember that in, um, for example, if you look at neuroleptic malignant syndrome, serotonin syndrome, and then malignant hyper uh, hyperthermia, in malignant hyperthermia specifically, in malignant hyperthermia, I always look at the fact that this is called malignant hyperthermia and I just use it as a little tip to remember that this particular one of these three that kind of presents similar, I just look at the word and say it must be so hot that you're shutting down the neural pathways in this disease. Same thing I'm doing here with the F for fever. So I'm saying all that to say because in malignant hyperthermia you would have decreased bowel sounds or you could say decreased bowel activity. And I related that because it's getting so hot in the body that your neural processes are being shut down. And remember, there's an enteric nervous system um, for your your uh, GI system that helps your bowels to kind of be moving forward. So that it's getting so hot that that's shutting down. Same thing here. You're having peripheral neuropathy because you're remembering F for fever for Febreze disease, and that is shutting down your peripheral um, basically your nervous system uh, sensory function at your distal extremities. So we have decreased sweating because you're in space, peripheral neuropathy because remember F for fever because it's really hot, so it's shutting down your nervous system. And the last one you're going to have to kind of remember on your own, angiokeratoma. All right, let's move on to the next one. Goucher's disease. When I say Goucher's disease, I just pronounce it as Goucher's disease. The reason is because the defining, first of all, let's go, before we get into the symptoms, let's look at Goucher's disease and how we're going to use this to kind of get what the enzyme that's deficient and everything else like that. So, first of all, the enzyme deficient here is glucocerebrosidase. Okay, so there's a deficiency in glucocerebrosidase, and then it's really simple. Well, what's going to be the buildup? Glucocerebroside, exactly like it's pronounced glucocerebroside. So those that takes care of what's deficient in this disorder. And you may remember that this disorder had a characteristic on histology, tissue paper macrophages. So I think of when I say gouchers, I say ouchers because some it sounds like ouch, like you've run into something or you've hurt yourself. So you may need a tissue because you're going to be crying. So tissue paper macrophages. That also, this mnemonic also works because another characteristic you're going to see in this disease is bone pain. Or you could say joint pain. And this can go even as far to where you would end up having a vascular necrosis of certain joints that can uh, present in this disease. So you have bone pain, you have these tissue paper macrophages, macrophages, and then you have the glucocerebrosidase uh, enzyme deficiency that's causing a buildup of glucocerebroside. Um, you, also, you also have hepatospinal megaly, but that, that is in so many of these that I usually don't use that as a defining characteristic because you wouldn't be able to recognize this disease because it has 
um, hepatosplenomegaly. So the last thing that it can have is anemia. So you'll see it that a patient that's bleeding a lot, but actually, truthfully, you can even have all the way into pancytopenia in this situation. You can have a decrease of red blood cells, platelets, and even um, all leukocytes. But you'll usually they present it as a patient who is bleeding a lot. So that goes back to the ouch. You've bump. You say you've bumped your toe on something and you're bleeding. Well, you could be crying, so you're gonna need tissue paper macrophages, and you could you're gonna probably be bleeding or injured from it. So you're gonna have a decrease in red blood cells. But really, you can have even all the way into pancytopenia at certain times, and then bone pain or joint pain, and that all goes into this mnemonic. Instead of saying goucher, say um, oucher. Okay, and glucose fibrosidase. The way that why. Um, you can remember that is because this starts with the G and that starts with the G. Okay, now you're probably thinking, well, there's other enzymes in these lysosomal storage diseases that start with the G, but I'm going to show you how to distinguish the other ones. I've already told you that alpha galactosidase is distinguished, even though it starts with the G. Even though it starts with the G, I said that galactosidase sounds like galaxy, so that helps you dif uh, differentiate that, okay, that's not the one dealing with Goucher's disease, so this would be under for Febreze disease. Okay, so the next one is Tay-Sachs disease. When I look at Tay-Sachs, you want to say Tay-6. That'll help you remember that this is a deficiency of hexose aminidase. Aminidase. These are all really hard to spell, so I'm sorry if I misspelled. That may be an O there or an A, I don't remember. Hexo, uh, hexose aminidase um, enzyme deficiency. So when you look at this particular one, this is going to be hexose aminidase A deficiency, and it's going to you're going to have a buildup of GM2. Okay, so that's what's going to build up when you have this deficiency in hexose. Now, why does Tay6 help? Because the beginning of the word is hexose. And hexose is a word referring to six, like six, something that is six has six sides. So that helped me to remember instead of saying Tay Sachs, Tay Tay Six disease. Now this is one of the ones that's most commonly tested. So I don't really have a mnemonic to remember a lot of the characteristics, but I'm going to show you the important differentiating characteristics they try to get you with on tests. So this is the one that has the red spot. If you remember the cherry red spot, it shows up all the time in questions. Cherry red spot on the macula. Okay, and if you see down here, let me show you over here in this picture, see this cherry red spot right here. And it's not the fact that that gets redder, it's the fact that the area around it gets whiter. That's the reason it gets more pale, and that's the reason that it has that cherry red spot on the macula uh, presentation. So, here's something really important for Tay-Sachs. This, this disease does not have, it has no hepatosplenomegaly. Splenomegaly. I'm telling you that because uh, Neiman Pick has hepatosplenomegaly. So everything will look exactly the same among the diseases except for the enzyme defi that's deficient, the what builds up because of that, and then whether there's hepatosplenomegaly or not. Both of them are going to have, have possibilities for neural uh, dysfunction. Um, mental retardation, all sorts, all sorts of neural symptoms. Both of them can have that, but the hepatosplenomegaly differentiates the two along with what specific enzyme is deficient. Okay, so that is for uh, Tay-Sachs. And one more thing to note: it's a little lower yield, but they could present this with a histology slide of a lysosome that has onion skinning. So it's going to basically be they're just. I mean, if they wanted to, they could show you a lysosome that's real far zoomed in on electron microscopy, and you're going to see this like these like layers of the um, lysosome, but that's a little bit more low yield. So the important thing is to know that there's no hepatosplenomegaly here and the fact that you need to pronounce it as Tay-6 disease, that'll help you remember to get the beginning of that word. So then you can remember, okay, this is dealing with the hexose aminidase deficiency and it has a buildup of GM2. Okay, Neiman Pick, like I just said, these are the two that you have to kind of distinguish. This also has a cherry red spot on macula. So when you see cherry red spot on the macula, you need to right away, especially if, the, if you see the answer choices are kind of all getting getting uh, asking about stuff about lysosomal storage diseases, you need to really begin thinking right away, Neiman pick disease or Tay-Sachs disease, right when you see cherry red spot on the macula. Okay, but this one has hepatosplenomegaly. Hepatosplenomegaly. So the trick for this one that I use to get some of the symptoms, not only just that, but some of the other symptoms, is to say, so when you look at Neiman Pick disease, I think of Neiman Spit disease. Neiman Spit disease. The reason is because this has a characteristic histology of foam cells. So these are lipid, you could say lipid filled or lipid laden, lipid filled 
um, macrophages. So when you look at this, you're going to see a picture of a of basically this cell that has all these lipids inside, these little circular kind of bubbly, bubbly frothy things, and that's going to be how you know that, okay, now you're talking about a foam cell, so this is a macrophage filled with all of these lipids. The way we remember that is because now foam, I think like spit is very, when you look at spit, like somebody spits out of their mouth, it's very bubbly and frothy and foamy, so that helps me remember foam cells, okay? So we talked about, I told you some of the defining characteristics though, but the most important thing you need to know is hepatosplenomegaly is present. Of course there's going to be neural symptoms, there could be a possibility of mental retardation or all sorts, anything neuromuscular that you can think of can present just like in Tay-Sachs, but hepatosplenomegaly is present here. And remember, foam cells are present in this situation where they're not present in Tay-Sachs. In Tay-Sachs you had that onion skinning of the lysosomes, alright, but both of them have the cherry red spot on the macula. So the next one is Crabbe's disease. I think of Mr. Krabs from Spongebob, and I'm going to show you. Obviously, you can see it right there, Crab. so I know Krabs is usually spelled like this, but in Spongebob, Mr. Krabs is spelled with a K. So Crabbe's disease, I want you to think of a crab. So in this particular disease, you there's a deficiency of another one that starts with a G. So, but this one is Galacto galactocerebrosidase see how the, all of these are very confusing this is why I'm doing the video because it's so easy to mix all of these different ones up so this is a deficiency in galactocerebrosidase so and then it's kinda common sense you'll have a buildup of galactocerebroside galactocerebroside I use this part of it to remember so if you look at a crab here's a picture of a crab right here that's kind of a strange looking crab but basically a crab has this big thick body and then the little you know hands and feet or whatever however many they have but they have that big wide thick body